Hello everyone. Welcome you all to this new video. So in my previous video, I had discussed with the, some of the DLC sub layers. Along with that, we have discussed the types of addresses which are used under the data link layer. Okay, the data link control. So those who have not seen that video, please go and watch it. So in this video, we will discuss with one important and very, very important concept of this module. It is a sure question. So you should be ticking this as very important video. Okay, I have already mentioned it in my thumbnail also. So please, please, please consider this guys because this question is repeated multiple times that is related to address resolution protocol along with the formation of ARP packets and unicast and broadcasting of ARPs. Everything in, in one video in this uh, assignment, whatever I've written in this, I'm going to be discussing. Okay, okay. Because in the notes, whatever I, I, I used to refer, right? that had around 10 to 10 to 12 pages for explanation which are not required so that's why i've just shortened it and i've written it in this uh, particular uh, book here and that in this book i'm going to be telling you what do you mean by this address resolution protocol in short okay so please please don't skip this video it's very important so this whatever i've uh, written right I've, I'm, i'll put it in the video's description go and access it okay so now let us start with today's concept of address resolution protocol or ARP. Anytime a node has the IP datagram to send to another node in a link, it has the IP address of the receiving node. Okay, so that is in order to be sending a data from the sender to receiver that is from a node in a link. Uh, if you represent using nodes, you, you know that if you are having two nodes at a time, one node acts as a sender and the upcoming nodes act, act as a receiver. In between whatever the connection is formed that is called as a link. Okay, so that I've already discussed in the first video. It has one set of IP address of the receiving node. Okay, why it has the IP address of the receiving node? Because in that node it is getting sent, right? In that next node, the data which are which is getting sent from the sender side, it is get is getting stored. So that's why the IP address should be of the receiving node. Okay. So that is the basic funda. Now the source host knows the IP address of the default router. So the default router is the basic path through which these links are getting connected. Okay. Each router except the last one in the path gets the IP address of the next router by using its forwarding table. So this forwarding table, what it does is it would be giving us a route through which the uh, labels or the routers are getting formatted in the particular link. Okay. So that's why that is called as a forwarding table. The last router knows the IP address of the destination nodes okay based on the path which is given by the forwarding table it goes through multiple nodes and at the destination node it would be containing the final ip address which is there on the destination host okay however the ip address of the next node is not helpful in moving a frame through a link through a link so that's why a frame that is a set of data it is not possible to be moving directly towards the next node okay so what we do is we need a link layer address of the next node. So that link layer address is given through this address resolution protocol. So this is the time when the ARP protocol becomes useful. And ARP protocol is one of the auxiliary protocols defined by the network layer. Okay, so this ARP protocol is defined by the network layer. Okay, so this is the basics which you need to be knowing just before the procedure of the ARP protocol, how it is getting formed in the particular end-to-end -end communication between the source and the receiver okay so it is clear right so based on this explanation only let us try to be understanding what do you mean by address resolution protocol now so please pause the video and refer it or note it down if you want okay now let us see the arp operation which is taking place in the unicast channel and the broadcast channel okay so the first figure shows the arp request is broadcast okay what do you mean by request ARP request and what do you mean by ARP reply? I'll tell you in detail. Okay, it's very easy. You see here ARP request. So you consider consider this is a, this has a particular hub or a switch which has uh, these systems along with its uh, particular routers and uh, these are the connections links which are getting formed from this hub here. Okay, so you see here this is system A, system B, system C and D. I have not uh, written it, but you write uh, mention it as system C and D. So now here system A is sending a request to from this hub here. Okay. Request means it is waiting for a reply from any of the systems. Okay. But ARP operation request is sent only by one system and it waits for the reply from any of the systems. Okay. So this is the basic operation of 
ARP request which is happening under address resolution protocol. Any one of the system is sending a request first. Okay, so in this case, system A is sending a request and it is waiting for the reply or in order to receive the acknowledgement, it is it should be waiting for the reply from any of the system. So that is system B, C, D. Okay, looking for link layer address of a node with IP address N2. Okay, it is searching. So in order to search, it sends a request first. So that's why this is the called as the ARP request is broadcast. Okay, broadcast means it would be waiting for any of the systems to be replied. So that's why it is called as broadcast. But the reply is unicast. Okay, that is any one of the system would be replying. So that's why it is called as unicast. As I've told you, ARP request is broadcast. It could be waiting for the acknowledgement by any of the system. But whereas under reply, for the request, any one system would be replying and we would be getting the end-to-end -end communication happening. You see here, in the previous stage, in the request stage, request was sent by system A. And the, with, with respect to that, acknowledgement is to be acted by any of the systems. But the reply is only sent by system b so that's why since the system b is only replying so that's why it is called as unicast and like this the request reply and the complete end-to-end -end communication is happening taking place between system a and system b with respect to request and reply arp operation okay so hope this is clear so you see here request for request was for looking for the link layer address of a node with ip address n2 so that's why system a has sent request and it was open to all the other systems so that's why it is called as broadcast and unicast means any one of the system from the, from the uh, regardless of the request system any one of the system would be sending a reply so the reply has is given by i am the node and my link address is n2 okay so here System B obviously had the link address as N2, L2. So that's why it, in the request packet, you see here, it was searching for N2 and system B has given the reply that I am the I am the host which has the link address N2. So that's why like this, the request reply is happening place under ARP operation. Through this, the address resolution would be affected only between those two systems, regardless of the uh, company of the other two systems. Okay, so other two systems play a vital role during the time of request procedure. But reply procedure is happening only between the one system and the request system. So other two systems are not getting involved. So this is the basic operations which you need to be knowing under ARP, ARP request and ARP reply. Okay. So please note it down. This is very important. You see here, every host or router on the network receives and processes the ARP request packet. But only the intended recipient recognizes the IP address and sends back the ARP response packet. As I've told you, the intended recipient in this case is system B because it has the link address which was asked from the system A, that is N2. IP address, it was consisting of N2, right? So that's why that system is only replying that is the intended recipient, okay? The response packet contains the recipient's IP address and the link layer address, okay? So IP address is N2, link layer address is L2, okay? The packet is unicast directly to the node that sent the request packet. How it is unicast? Because you see here, for a system B is sending the reply directly to the system A through which the request was sent. Okay, it is not affecting any other systems in the path. So here the direct communication is happening. So that's why it is unicast. Okay, so hope this is clear. Now let's get to the concept of ARP packet. That is address resolution packet. What and all it consists of packet format. Everything we'll discuss. Okay. ARP packet, it is a 32-bit packet. It consists of totally 32 bits starting from 0th bit up to 31 bit. The first 16 bits are of the hardware type and the next 16, 16 bits are represented for the protocol type. Okay. Hardware means LAN or WAN protocol. Protocol deals with the network layer protocol. Okay. This hardware type is again subdivided into hardware length and protocol length. Okay. The 88 bits and the operation is uh, and uh, the next, next 16 bits are for the operation that is whether we want request operation for request operation the input bit is represented as one and for reply operation the it is represented as two okay two or zero okay in, in case of binary it is zero and for a decimal it will be representing them as request one and reply two okay so this is the basic format of arp packet okay then it has the formation of source hardware address then source protocol address destination hardware address and destination protocol address. What do you mean by source hardware address? 
it consists of the hardware type and the hardware length is fixed source protocol addresses it consists of the protocol type that is a network layer protocol and the address length is fixed based on the bits required destination hardware uh, addresses it is empty in request okay because there is no uh, request uh, which is present here in the destination hardware address whereas in the destination protocol address it is empty in reply okay so this is the basic arp packets what and all it consists of okay so please uh, note it down now let's get to the packet format how it is uh, represented as you see here the hardware type field defines the type of the link layer protocol okay this is the hardware type field and it defines the type of the particular link layer protocol ethernet is given of type 1 the protocol type field defines the network layer protocol okay as i, as I have told you here it is the network layer protocol the protocol type field and it is the ipv4 that is ip version 4 protocol so this we will discuss in detail in the upcoming modules and this is the basic ipv4 protocol symbol that is 080060 okay it is a hexadecimal symbol here for used for ipv4 protocol source hardware and source protocol addresses are the variable length field defining the link layer and network layer addresses of the sender okay it acts only in the sender side whereas the destination uh, hardware and protocol addresses acts at the receiver side okay you see here destination hardware and protocol addresses fields define the receiver link layer and network layer address addresses an arp packet is encapsulated directly into the data link frame the frame needs to have a field to show that there are the, the, that the payload begins to the arp and the not to the network layer. okay so that's why the arp packet is getting encapsulated directly that is the procedure is taking place from 0th bit to 31st bit in this in this way itself okay the path followed is this path itself it goes like this and like this it would be covering all the arp packet sections that is encapsulation is taking place okay so yeah so this is all about arp packet address resolution protocol and uh, how it is represented in unicast channel and broadcast channel how request reply is taking place everything i've thought to be discussing in one video hope it is clear please please watch this video share this video with multiple users and please please spread this channel to a huge number okay so that's all for this video guys.